everyone and welcome to this brand new video and we're in Norfolk and we're going to follow a section a long section of the Norfolk and Suffolk joint railway and this ran all the way from Cromer interconnecting a lot of seaside towns and villages right around in a great big curve and joined up at North Walsham and it was opened in two sections the North Walsham to Bunsley section was opened in July 1898 and the section from Cromer was also opened a little later on the 3rd of August 1906. So our route today we're going to follow all the way from Cromer to a little seaside place called Trimmingham and it will take in places such as Cromer Tunnel, we've got Cromer Links Holt, we've got Overstrand and we've got Sidestrand Station before eventually arriving at Trimmingham. And there are still many railway related things to see along this route, bridges, stations, old buildings along the way it was related to the railway but not so much as the place I'm stood right now just outside of Cromer I'm in a place called East Runton and we've got a beautiful little viaduct to let you have a look at so I do hope you've got a cup of tea or any beverage and maybe even a piece of cake of your choice because this is quite a long one railmaponline.com you can see that light blue line running from right to left across the map and that is the former railway that we're going to be following today. The pink one in the top left corner, that is the active line between Cromer and Sheringham. So the current Cromer station is just here on the right hand side, right on the edge of town. You can see the line going off to North Walsham and back to Norwich, heading off down to the bottom of the line towards Sheringham going off to the left. And our East Runton viaducts are right about here. And I'm gonna jump over to the old maps and show you a little bit closer what it looks like and you can see railway is under construction that's what it says just down here so this map is from around 1900 and that is quite fascinating to see isn't it and we've got our east runton viaducts right at the top just here and chroma is also off to the right hand side too This viaduct has been out of use since 1964. It last saw passenger workings in the late 1950s but continued to be served by freight up until 1964. And it's made of blue brick throughout and it has got a lot of ballast on the floor. Look at that, all over. And there's even what looks like a milepost stuck in the ground. There's absolutely no movement there. So that's well stuck in there because potentially at latter point of its life, it was actually a single track formation. Now, the thing about East Runton Viaducts is it's not the only one, there's two. I'm gonna show you. Just down there, you just make out an archway. And this one is in fact in use and it's a very popular and busy railway line linking Sheringham through to Cromer, North Walsham and on to Norwich. And it's known as the Bitten Line. So if I was to carry on to the far side of the viaduct, which I will do, but won't go beyond, it will in fact join on to this active railway line, which again, we go nowhere near. Let me turn you about and you can see where we're looking at. So there's the end of our brick viaduct just there. And there's the two side walls and that's the end I got on.
So that's what our track bed looks like, heading off as if it was going towards Cromer Tunnel. Absolutely impossible to get down. And I believe it also goes onto private land anyway. I'm going to go down and have a look and show you what it looks like from below. So this is what it looks like from ground level. This is top common, Buxton Close over there and the small village of East Runton. Five arches look, one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is just hidden out of sight. You might have just seen a bit of footage from it. I've got quite a few cobwebs in my face coming down there, so that's not been very nice. It's really, really high up, isn't it? And it's really, really nice. So beautiful that it's still here and being looked after. If we stand there look you can just make out the second one coming into shot the active line between Sheringham and Cromer here it is on the other side look this is on the coastal side and spin you around and there's the active line, which you should have just seen a quick shot of a working going over towards Sheringham. So East Runton Viaduct is not the only significant structure on this route. I'm now going to leave here and I'm going to jump over to our next point of Cromer, where we're going to take a look at Cromer Tunnel, the only standard gauge tunnel remaining in the whole of Norfolk. So moving on, I can show you exactly where we are. This is the site of Cromer Tunnel, so we're on the blue line going from left to right and you've got the old Cromer High Station site just there. There's nothing left there now, and you can see where that green line goes down and joins onto the current active line off to Norwich. And this is what Google Maps shows us today. So the site of Cromer High Station is just on the left, and the line zips around in like a curve. And if we go to the map overlay from around 1900, again, you can just make out the root of the line, and we'll go to the full map from 1900, and again, it says railways, the course of construction. So it's still being built when this map was done. OK, looking back at the A149 overbridge, right at the tunnel mouth now, beautiful blue brick lot. Lots of ivy on the opposite side. So nice to actually get down here. This is brilliant. So hidden away. Let's have a little look further inside and I'll get the big light out and see if we can make it look a bit more illuminated. Got quite a nice looking roof there, look. look. Pretty tidy. A little bit of graffiti on the left. And look at these concrete cable carriers. Ah, all the way along. Brilliant. Right, see on the other side, we've got ourselves a recess look. Don't know if how many there is. Looks like there's about four of them. This is pretty beautiful to get down here. The second recess is on the left look, we've still got the concrete cable carrying arms. So second recess, nice and deep, blue brick all the way along. There's a great big pile of rubble up on this left hand side all the way, which is, it's like the ballast from the entire track bed under the tunnel has been scooped over and just left there. So as I say look, it's a very short tunnel, we're almost at the other end, around about 50 metres in length. But I'm fairly pleased I've come down. There's a lot of crap down here, but it's lovely, isn't it?
We're just approaching out the other end now. We've still got the concrete posts for the cable or signal carriers. We've got the fourth and final recess. Quite a bit of graffiti at this end. And as we come out the other end, it will show us the former track bed heading off towards Overstrand and Mundersley. from the site of the tunnel and I'm on North Rips Road and I'm looking for Chroma Links Holt opened in 1923 it consisted of a single platform that cost around £170 a couple of benches running boards and just a couple of gas lamps its primary function was to try and encourage holidaymakers to this line and along this coast but it didn't last very long and it basically mostly served the Royal Chroma Golf Course so coming off North Rips Road the station was accessible along this track if I turn you around you can see this part of the embankment just there look and there would have been a bridge going over North Rips Road and where there's now some houses over there we will be back on North Rips Road in a little while because we do get the opportunity to follow part of the track bed further up here North Rips Road loops around and we'll pick it up again a little bit later on what I want to do now is see if I can actually get up on top of this track bed Look at that just there next to this telegraph pole. That's dating back a bit, isn't it? Right, there's the embankment and I'm gonna try my best to get up. Shouldn't be too difficult. I can get up there and see what it's like in both directions. There we go. So that's looking towards Overstrand, Trimmington and beyond. And that is looking back at North Rips Road. I'm gonna I think we could actually get to the very end of the embankment. It's not as overgrown as you might expect. There's a little bit of something there, look. Concrete formation of some kind, reinforced. And there's an old coping stone here, look. How about that? And that's our view. Looking back where the bridge once went, over North Rips Road and straight on towards Chroma Tunnel. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So I'm going to follow the track bed as far as I can and see if there's anything hidden down there worth looking at. Right, so at this point it does turn into an official footpath so the track bed we've just been on came across there look and now we're on the embankment going forward you see it curves to the right hand side so another one of these over here look hidden out of sight just showing you a little more history of its being a railway line so i'm going to keep pushing on and i wasn't really expecting it to be a path like this to be fair never walked down here for once so we'll see how far it goes and I hope we do find some stuff. So we've gone from that embankment look and we've got ourselves into a bit of a cutting on both sides. 
relatively deep compared to what we were just on. If you remember, when we first got onto this section, we was, we was quite high up. No sign of anything railway related other than the cutting itself. There's nothing on the ground. Although it looks like there might be the remains of a bridge coming up into view. Just a little way down here. Let's go and see. bridge abutments on both sides it must have been some sort of farm access or some sort of overbridge for pedestrians look at it coming up there and over there look and it was probably a nice quaint little single arch and there's the other one on the other side look it might even be possible to get up on top you can see the retaining wall again just down the side um, that side looks tricky. We've got Cromer Road on that side as well, just to give you a reference of where we are. I'm going to try and have a look around and see if I can actually... No, it looks a bit... But there, yeah, you can see basically how it would have gone. And probably when it's been demolished overhead, this is what has caused this infill to cause... You know, it's going downhill there look, and it slopes downhill on this side too. So what a brilliant find that is. That's really lost and hidden away, isn't it? I wonder how many people walk past that and just think it's, no, it's just, just a piece of wall, brick, nothing, nothing amazing. So I'm gonna push on after finding that bridge, which is just over there. It looks like it's gonna take not quite a nice little curve away from Cromer Road situated over there. And eventually there'll be a bit of an embankment before we meet up with Northrep Road again. It's another one of those just there looking centre of shot. I think I've seen about five or six of them darsing along the track bed, originally starting on that side, but then appearing on this side. We stopped curving round just now. There's another one up here. I'm going to actually try and get to it. There we go, look. That's good, isn't it? all the pulleys on there and around the side amazing you can see how high up we are as well in a bit of a cutting still we're going that way towards Overstrand So we've got a great big tree. Look at that, growing right out of this drain. Red brick drain. That's gotta been there many, many years, hasn't it, to get that high? 70 odd years, I'd say. Before we know it, we're back in the cutting again. Beautiful behind. It would have been a lovely sight and sound to have come along here back in the day, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm coming out of that cutting now and I believe we're going to lose the track bed for a little while. The track bed does carry on, but it goes on to a very steep embankment as it approaches North Reps Road. And what this should be there is a bridge that went straight over and carried on the formation of the track bed. But the bridge is gone. The abutment, I believe, is still there, but it's quite a high one. So what they had to do was take the footpath around onto Northrop's Road, and then it'll bring you round and go what would have been underneath that bridge. Now, upon getting to the end of that path where it zips away and takes you through the woods onto Northrop's Road, I actually found another path which comes down alongside the actual very embankment, which is just there, look. So I can take this down to Northrop's Road and follow the formation up until the bridge that is no longer there.
And here is that forward bridge abutment, look, RNW2330, still painted up just there. So that's a real sight, isn't it, that, to see that it is still there. I told you it was high up, didn't I? Behind me, the one is missing, but it is bungalows. Which I am obviously not going to show you that because it is, of course, private property. You can see it on the other side. I'm trying not to get the sun's glare in shot. But yeah, another piece of railway history. So next stop along our North Norfolk coast disused railway line explore and walk is Overstrand. I think you're going to like this because Overstrand station still has its buildings and other little bits to accompany it too. On the 3rd of August 1906, Overstrand got its very own station and it only lasted until the 7th of April 1953. But it was very, very busy in the summer months as you can imagine with this beautiful coastline uh, resounded all the way along Norfolk just there. I believe part of this station is still here and I'm hoping we can just pop along here and see if we can find it. And I have, I found it. And it is a private residence now, but it appears to be pretty much intact. There's a underpass, a road just below us with a nice blue brick bridge and the underneath there would have been a path or a passage leading up with the canopy leading straight up to the platforms. All this is still there and I'm gonna turn you around and you'll get to have a little look at this. Look at that, so there's the bridge underneath just there. It is private land, we've got to respect that. Maybe one day we can come back and have a look. But for now, you can see the canopy covered platform access going up there. Look, you can see the platform just on that side and you can just make out the other platform pretty much just behind or between the tree and that canopy and there are station buildings up there too i'm hoping that i can get some old photos of this to give you a good look at what it does look like but if you're watching this and you're the owner of this station this beautiful station i can have the opportunity to look around at a future date that would be very very much appreciated <music> So back to the maps and we're going to look at the location of where Overstrand Station is because it's still there. Overstrand is just over here on the right hand side, it's all that built up here and you can just make out the beach but Overstrand Station, it's lovely and the buildings are still there. We go to the overlay and you can see again the course of the railway and the route and it is still saying it's under construction as it probably does all the way along as we zip along to the old map from 1900. And you can see there's even a section where the railway is missing. I don't know why they've not drawn that in, but that gives us a greater picture of where everything is. I can zoom in a little bit there, look, and you can just make out that bridge, the access bridge for the station that I was telling you about. Look right inside and you can make out those white tiles on the inside and there is an iron cross section still present too. I'm going to see if we can see anything of the other side. That is what it looks like on the other side. It is fenced off, but I can just make out those white tiles on the inside once more. So that is a brilliant find. So all credit due there for Overstrand Station closed in 1953 for keeping it alive in its present form. Again, if anybody knows or you are the owner of that property and you'd be happy for me to have a little look around, that'd be so much appreciated. Next up, we're going to carry on along Cromer Road because the track bed that disappears and shoots over there. And I'm going to see what we can find next. According to maps, I think there might be a nice little bridge to look at next. So I'm about another quarter of a mile along the route from Overstrand Station. I've followed Cromer Road over there and I've come onto this track because I think there might be a bridge or the remains of a bridge along here. The track bed is down there in a very, very shallow cutting. Overstrand, as I say, is about a quarter of a mile down there. But we're going on a bit of a hill look, and I think this track's gonna take a hard right and take us over the track bed. And I'm hoping it's not infilled, but it probably is. 
Let's go find out. So how about this, eh? Both walls are still present. Coping stones on top. And it's that overgrown. Look at the trees. These trees are coming all the way from track bed level. That is the most ultimate overgrown railway you'll probably ever come across. I can point the camera through and you can just, just see right down there. But it is a jungle and it is also infilled. I can see it's infilled. And I've got to imagine it's the same on the opposite side. It does appear to be, doesn't it? We go towards the side of Cromer Road where we've just come from. The walls are intact. Right, so after finding that beautiful, beautiful little relic, not much of it left, but the fact is, it's still there. And as long as it's still there, that little bit of reminder of the railway history still exists. Back onto Cromer Road, I'm now going to head off towards Side Strand, but also once had its very own station. But I believe, oh, other than like Overstrand, there is nothing left of this at all. Okay, about halfway between Overstrand and Side Strand, I've took a public footpath in the direction of the track bed again. I think I found something really, really cool. Now this was very much unexpected. It is just a footpath, whether it used to be farm access, heading up towards North Reps, I don't know. But look at it, blue brick, trees on the side wall in the coping stones, but it's all still there. Look, you've got a great big crack down the side, which has probably come from what looks like a great big oak tree just there. And the archway is absolutely unreal. Um, let's have a look through the other side. Nice little bit of an echo, a little bit of a drain exit at the bottom. And I'll reverse you out. Look, look at that, look at that brickwork. That's a thing of beauty, isn't it? And all down the other side, you've got the ivy, the reeds and the weeds all hanging down. I bet it's unlikely, if I have a look this way, if I can get on top of that. So there's no way up there. And that looks pretty impossible too. I think I might have found a way up. There's your bridge there, look. If we follow this track up, we may be able to get around and get on top of our rummage up here. Looks like it's going to be a bit spiky, but not impossible. Let me try. Let me try. I just don't want nettles in the face. There we go, look. And that is as close as I'm going to get. We've got the side wall on the coastal side of this bridge. The other one, you might just be able to make out in centre of shot, but it's completely overgrown. So the track bed goes back towards Overstrand and Cromer in that direction, and Side Strand would have been over the bridge we've just been looking at, which is there. I'm going to make my way carefully back down to the footpath there was something at the bottom of here i want to show you as well look at that nice little reminder and we saw these earlier on in the first part of this walk didn't we near the chroma halt station Upon leaving Side Strand, the track bed then heads on over towards Trewingham. 
and Munsley. But before that, there's a little bit of the embankment and the abutment it still remains. Look at this, the, the embankment's gone, but there's an abutment you can just make out as you slide around here. And through here, apologies for the wind, you can just make it out through there, look. And there would have been a bridge going over there where the embankment continues just there. And remarkably, as we come away from Top Road, where I've just shown you where that bridge used to be, it appears you could actually get up onto the track bed. Look at this. All the way to the top, what we're going to see? Having a bit of a run. Yep, there we go, look. A nice bit of track bed embankment to walk. And that is the view looking back towards Top Road, where we was just stood and over Strand and back onto Cromer. This is quite a pleasant surprise. Let's see how far we can get along here. Although I've found nothing that resembles a railway along this embankment, it is worth pointing out that, excuse the agricultural equipment down there, that it is a very, very high embankment. That goes a very, very long way down. It's one of the highest I've been on for a very, very long time. Look how tall the trees are. On the other side, pretty much the same. Let's find a little gap for you. Look at that. There were no trees there and a lot of snow. It'd be perfect for sledging. That's how steep and deep these embankments actually are. So that's my view going forward looking. I mean, it's beautiful, but it doesn't look like a railway apart from the obvious shape of the embankment. And it's worth reminding you again of the amount of manhours and money it must have been ploughed into, even just creating this stretch of high embankment. When you think this section didn't open until 1906 and it was gone by 64, that's less than 60 years that this line was active. It seems such a waste. So evidence of a former bridge or maybe the soil and the embankment has just been removed to be put somewhere else. But it does suddenly just drop down here. We've got a holiday park on the right hand side and we're going to drop down. It's not like it's as if a bridge was here because there's only fields on the opposite side. It's not like there's a track or trail or farm access. So I've come down what is Trimmingham Road with Trimmingham being just up there in this very, very narrow single width road look. And I found this beautiful bridge, three arches. Look at this, just nestled away and hidden down here. That looks in great condition. Look at those. It's a great big crack up there. Uh, let's take you through to the other side. Looks really good underneath and yeah, there we go. There's the view looking the opposite way, look. Look at the old drain pipe there, look. That's brilliant. And again on that side. That's great, isn't it? You know what's next, don't you? We've got to see if we can get on top. little pheasant there. Here we go, look at this beauty. So now I'm at the top, I can actually show you something else, or maybe not show you, but in that direction, back where we just came from, 
used to be trimming and station. Opened in August 1906 and shut, I believe, in 1954. It used to have two platforms and did indeed also serve a lot of tourism as well as local traffic and farm. At this side we've got this beautiful bridge. It's very, very high up and it's even got recesses on both sides. They look like they're staggered as well. Let's go and take a look. So, still got the coping stones. Well, it's actually concrete on top, look, like it was on that previous bridge we saw earlier on. And then it's blue brick lined throughout. Not as overgrown as it could have been. It's more just grassy and metally. Let's take a look at this first little recess, look. That's pretty smart, isn't it? I mean, you've got to say that this must have a lot of topsoil on it because there's no sign of any ballast and the grass is quite spongy because I, I do find these brick walls very, very low. So you could easily stand there and fall over. That's RAF Twimmingham just over there that you can see on the other side, slightly staggered. We've got another one again. I'll just say again, if I was to stand here, there's not a lot of protection on that wall if you was um, taken aback by a train speeding past. Definitely single track width though isn't it? That's something else to note. So this right here, this is Trimmingham. It appears to be a smaller community than the Overstrand area and the curve of the railway, let's jump to the overlay again and you can see the railway is just here again under course of construction and if we look close enough on the full map we can make out where the station is because it appears that they've even drawn in the island platform and a small viaduct we've found well where's that it's right here and the railway is again course of construction that is absolutely fascinating to see that on these maps i've never used any maps before where it's actually showed this And moving further along, we've got the second recess on the left-hand side, on the coastal side of this bridge. You'll notice a lot of the blue brick coping stones are in fact missing off the top. Whether we can see if they fell over and gone. No, there's no trace of them down there whatsoever. But they could have been collected up if they'd hit the embankment and rolled down into the road and taken away. Other side, second recess. And all the coping stones are intact. And we get to the other end look and it's a concreted end section once again some red brick down there at the bottom Let's see if we can just have a poke around here and get it from a different angle hopefully there's no cobwebs there we go look at that what a fine structure that is isn't it and that down there is our track bed off towards munsley which would be the next station stop along this route but we're not doing that today. That's it, we've come to the very end of part one of this route of the Disused Railway from Cromer to Trimmingham today. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm gonna have a nosy down there. I don't think I'm gonna see anything and we'll pick this up in a later date. Thank you very much for watching. If you like your Disused Railways or history, um, there's another one I've done in Norfolk, which is just on Trimmingham Beach. Have a look for that. I'll put a link at the end and I'll make it as the suggested video at the end. It's absolutely astonishing. Take care, see you in the next one. Bye bye.